Hi, this is George Free, and welcome to another Martial Arts Media Business Podcast. Today I have a, another great guest with me, Sifu Jack Lung. And Sifu Jack Lung has a, well, I, I guess I'll start off with the video side of things, has a awesome YouTube channel. You've got to see the videos to, uh, to appreciate it, and we will, we'll link to it in, in the show notes. And look, video marketing, doing video in general is something, uh, it's a big component. We're always talking about it in the Martial Arts Media Academy with our students of really leveraging it. And Jack claims he's not an expert, but I'm sure you're going to disagree when you watch his videos. So first and foremost, welcome to the show, Jack. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Awesome. So let's start just in the beginning to give people a bit of an idea. Who is Jack Lung? Hi, uh, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Jack Learn, and I teach Wing Chun in Queensland. Um, I currently run two full-time uh, clubs, and also uh, different four different uh, small clubs at uh, different locations, at school halls and uh, uh, town, like uh, community centres. All right, cool. So, going a bit further back, how how did your whole martial arts journey evolve? Um, I started our training in Hong Kong, and I'm from Hong Kong. Uh, I started off training with karate first in high school, and I went to, uh, let's just say, a rough high school, and we get to test a lot of things before there were video phones and, and, and that kind of stuff, okay? So sometimes uh, a lot of uh, instructors don't say they, um, they, they only tell you the good stories. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, sometimes you lose badly, and that's when I started looking into martial arts. In the beginning, I like to tell people, and this is what I tell parents, I want to be stronger to be able to protect myself. But that wasn't the case. I just want to be very good and protect myself and beat up other kids. <laughs> that, that, but that's very different 20 years later. You know, that's very different 20 years later. So that's how I started. And I, I started training uh, uh, Goju Karate first uh, for five or six years. And in between, I trained some different types of Kung Fu, uh, some Southern Praying Mantis, different lineages of uh, uh, Praying Mantis. And then I met my Sifu in 1996 when I walked past uh, on the way to school. Uh, and then um, I started, you know, I just walk in and say, what is Wing Chun? And that, that got me got me interested, got me interested in training Wing Chun. Yes. Awesome, so, so how long have you actually been in Australia then? Uh, so I've been here, in, uh, I think, uh, no, uh, roughly 20 years now. Yeah, I think 20 years. Yeah, let me think, no, 96. Yeah, I was here. Yeah, twenty years now. And and how was so? So your whole family moved over to Australia. No, I came over to study first, and then I went back and forth. Uh, in the beginning, um, I I didn't know if I liked this place. Yeah, and then so I came over, I study, and I went back and forth, and uh, yeah, and then I that's that's how I stayed behind. Yeah. So so what made you really see Australia as a way to you know to obviously further your life and and stay permanently? Um, I would like to say, um, it's, uh, I, I like, I like, I like Brisbane. I'm from Brisbane and this is, uh, I love the weather here and, um, I love, it's a sunshine state. I love the beach and outdoor, uh, living. It's, it's great. It's great. I'm not saying Hong Kong's not great, but it can be a crowded places and, um, just a lot of conflicts, a lot of people. Oh, I'm, let me rephrase this. There's conflicts everywhere, yeah. but it's just easier when you have to travel every day you go on train and there's lots of people in and out like a big city like that you know it's i i, I prefer i prefer uh brisbane i like this and i like australia that's why i'm here yes awesome cool so now so you you train you started your, your journey in hong kong and then you moved to australia so h- how did this evolve to then actually starting the going on the teaching journey so I never thought I would uh, I would teach uh, kung fu or any martial arts. But so uh, before I teach um, um, kung fu, I was doing um, I was I had a graphic design company and printing company. I was doing that for the past ten years before that. And um, it's good the, in terms of uh, business wise, it's not bad. You know, it's not bad. But you all, I just have to always work over hours. Always, um, just imagine if you need a business card or, or flyers for for your event, okay, for your next event. Yes. You always people always come in and say, "I need it 
when do you need it? I need it yesterday. It's always a rush job. And when you're a boss, it's hard because when, when other, other people, you know, your, your employee leave and finish work at 5.30 or 6, you're the boss and you have a client and they want it urgently. So who's going to stay behind? Your job. You know, if they're willing to pay extra loading, extra loading as in, you know, they pay an extra $60 for extra time, who's going to stay behind? You will have to stay behind. I will have to stay behind. Meaning every night, lots of time, I stay until nine o'clock and very late. Yes, that's right. Yes, I was at a, at a business conference on Monday in Sydney and, uh, and it was kind of a joke that came up. You know, you, you're the business owner and then you've got the staff and it was kind of like, you know, these, it, it, was, it was said in a, in a sarcastic way, you know, how, do, how can these bastards not want to work the hours that we want to work as the business owners? So we always yes. expect them to, uh, to obviously give that output. But yes, I understand that pressure of, you know, your, your clients, and you always feel your reputation is at stake, you know, so even if it's the littlest thing, you, if you love your job and your business, you always take it to, oh, I've, I've got to, I've got to just stick to this deadline, whether it's impossible or, or not. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> so that's why, that's how I decided I, um, you know, after 10 years of doing the same thing, I, I decided to um, just start something else. You know, I, I first got into uh, fitness training. I was doing that, and um, and and and, bits, and and it was hard. And it's never easy, you know, to to all the uh, business martial arts business owner out there, or for who for those who are interested in going full time. I'm telling you, it's not easy. Okay, but if you do what you like, you don't have to work a day in your life anymore. And that's my favorite quote. <laughs> I love that quote. That's yeah, that's fantastic. So let's let's go into our topic that we're going to talk about. Well, focus on a, a little more, and that's a video, video marketing, and just doing videos. So, um, I guess for starters, why why video for you? Why video for me? Um, because I come from a creative industry and printing graphic design. I um, I like the visual aspect. You know, when um, what draws attention. And this is very different and, and interesting how how um, this compared to like 10 years ago. You know, I remember when Facebook uh, first started, it was a lot of posts, a lot of uh, uh, photos, pictures, and, and it became uh, YouTube, YouTube videos. There was no Facebook videos. And that's when how um, people start sharing videos. And I, I think, you know, on the sidetrack, I think that's the best time to do, to, uh, do YouTube videos. But now, now it, uh, it's easier. The platform seems like it's easier to share videos and the technology change. And now we all have smartphones. So it's very easy to just shoot something and um, sp spread your ideas, what you do online and showcase what you, you know, showcase um, how you train or training, you know, any tips. And, think, and that's why I started doing videos. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know the stats, but I mean, there's... I don't know how many. I, I, I should, yeah, I'll I'll try and get the stats for the for the the transcript. But I mean, there's I don't know how many billions of videos that get. I think it's just uploaded on a on a daily basis, and and then watched. And I mean, internet connections are getting faster. Um, it just becomes a lot easier for people to just watch video. So you mentioned a key thing there about attention. So I mean, that's really the key of video because. Everybody always talks about, hey, we should do video. And then they go shoot a live video of them fumbling around and procrastinating. And then two minutes in, you've watched nothing. And that's obviously the wrong way of doing it. So if you focus on the attention aspect, what, what would you, how would you go about that to really capture people's attention? So um, from, my, from my experience, okay, I'm not any expert, but I just try to learn from different people's videos. I watch a lot of uh, YouTube videos from, you know, and, and try to learn from them. And, and this is from my, my research. It's people just have very short attention span, unfortunately. And then, and, and, you know, if you don't capture them within the first 30 minutes, some, some even say, for, for, uh, I'm not, I said 30 minutes, I, I mean 30 seconds, okay? And, and even if you can't capture Facebook videos in 10 seconds, you know, you can't really get them. So, so um, first of all, like like you said, uh, you have to have really have a topic, and what the video is for is this to showcase your techniques, or is it just to spread um, some self defense, or even or, or the culture of your school, marketing for your school. You know, you really have to do. Uh, uh, you really have to work out on a topic 
in order to to uh, showcase your video and, and to make it better for your business. Okay, cool. So, so you start with the topic, and then I guess really communicating that really clearly that the person that's going to watch it that they know immediately. All right, this is what I'm. This is what's in it for me. I, I'm going to get this. Then, how do you how do you sort of transition from from that? So, uh, sorry, I can't hear you again. Sorry, it wasn't okay, clear. Yes. Uh, so, so how how would you transition from? So you've done the opening. Then what becomes the focus in the video from there? It really depends on on the individual topic. So um, if if this video is to showcase our school and we put it on a website for marketing, then um, what sort of image would you uh, want to uh, display yourself? For if, if you're a fight gym and you have a lot of fighters, I would say um, you would put different types of uh, fighting videos in there, and um, you know. And if you're a family, uh, a family oriented gym or, or school, then you would put, uh, you know, different, different topics, why, how you could actually give confidence to uh, the young children, young kids. And if you're uh, focusing on self-defense or, uh, or, or if it's just a general awareness video, then you have a different topic specific uh, video. So then you go into it. I, I see a lot of times that people just do a video and just randomly shoot like what you said earlier just shoot around this is my school and this is what we're doing and um there's no lighting audio is really bad and and uh, you know i'm not saying my video is good okay please don't get this wrong i'm trying to learn i'm trying to learn this kind of I'm, I, it's more than just an iphone or, or a, a smartphone to view now it's it's more about lighting it's more about getting a good mic if you're if you're trying to explain your concept you need good audio you need good yes. good um, yeah, so that's that's very all. It's all together in one package, and sometimes, sometimes it's interesting too. Some normal videos that you shot by people shot by their phone will go viral too. You know, it's the content too. It's also the content. You have everything in the right place, but you don't have the right content. It won't work. Yeah. Yes, there's there's because there's so many ways to to go about that. Like one thing I always try to sp- uh, speak about to our members in the academy is. To, I guess to get over the the initial, there, there is a fear element to it, um, which 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 is almost strange for me with martial uh, martial arts instructors because it's nothing different to what you would do on a day to day basis. You you are you are teaching, um, so you know looking at the, I, I guess just to break down the layers of. What are the obstacles to overcome to do video? Um, and and that that being, do you really need the flash video camera or can you just use the iPhone? Um, do you need the fancy lighting? Um, so, so you prefer the, the, the lighting and you work with, what type of equipment do you use then when you go about your... It, de- it depends on uh, what sort of videos I do. So sometimes uh, I get uh, a team in, uh, a video for a photographer in, and they, uh, they're good at what they do. You know, you have to respect those people, and that's what they study, and that's what they, you know, give credits to them, and they can uh, produce some really high-quality video. But sometimes for, like, a technique workshop, so I'm, I'm going to introduce, uh, so what happens when people grab my choke me, grab my neck, uh, what do you do? You know, those kind of short videos, you, it's, it's about the content. So you just, well, for, you need a proper, you know, you, you can't just shoot it with a, with a really old VHS camera or your video camera, but you, it has to be HD. Uh, the light has to be good. You know, it has to be good. And uh, uh, if you don't have good lights, you can always shoot under the sun, just not facing the sun. You know, just, you know, make sure it's under the sun. And also audio has to be good. Uh, the problem with the smartphone is it's, uh, you don't have a good um, uh, a mic to it. What I'm saying is, Mike, when I'm shooting, for example, if I, I'm holding a camera here and the person's way, you know, is usually you want to show, showcase the entire body, how they stand. So it's actually at least four or five meters away. And when you're trying to explain things that far away with a smartphone, it's really hard. Yes. So when I, I got a, I got a, a, a professional road, um, a professional mic uh, from, uh, from a store. And so I can hook it up and... And it gives better, you know, but there's, it's never going to be as good as professional uh, video photographer. But it de- really depends on what sort of video uh, you're generating or you're producing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like you said, the content, like my, um, and I can probably, I can't reach it now. 
Um, it's a little, it's it's a little lav mic, so it's a oh, little mic that that goes right. to your. Um, you could just clip it on your shirt, and then it just goes in the iPhone. And but I've got this long lead that uh, that if I need the <laughs> distance, <laughs> that that can, that can be a little tricky because I used to have one of those, and it can be really tricky when you're demonstrating yes. for 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 uh, for normal use. If you're presenting this idea, that's perfect. But if you're demonstrating a martial art move, uh, just imagine a, a ground fighter, you know, with, with that to explain. It's very hard because it <laughs> tangle them all up. Okay, I'll choke them out. I'm, I'm just saying. But but um, that. So I, I recently just bought. I, re, I keep buying toys every week, and, and my, if my wife is watching this, she's not going to be happy. <laughs> okay. So I bought a wireless uh, uh, like uh, a mic. So I, I'm testing it out, so I can wear it on me. And uh, I can put it my I, I can put up my iPad or my uh, SLR, and then I can uh, the vo- volume audio can go across, and that's hopefully that will work for me. Yes, <laughs> that's yeah. And and um, so so just on the because you said you you had a Rode mic. That's that's the premium brand with um with mics. So you have it on and sort of on a sort of a boom stand that it's just above right. you right. when you and or. Or um, you know, we you can always do this at a lower cost. The 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 road mic that I bought uh, isn't too expensive. It's about it's on hundred hundred dollars. Uh, and and on a, when you were saying the root stand, I I didn't get that. I, you can I I just tangle it on on a stick. You know, yes. on, on a training stick we have. It's the same idea, but someone will have to hold it. You know, hold it up high, or you can somehow just attach it over the top and. That's a good. That's a a cheaper option for for good uh, video audio. Yeah, if you do. All right, great. So so I guess one thing I really try and get across to to martial arts school owners is to really embrace the idea of video, because it's just it's the one platform that you can leverage. I mean, you can create one video, you can transcribe the actual audio, you can turn it into a blog post, you can email it to your prospects. Then you can start your social media, and you can you can just place it everywhere. So it's if if um, if you can look for a leverage point for your marketing, then video is really it because it's the one modality that you can just convert into all these multiple modalities. Um, so, what advice would you give for a martial arts instructor that's hesitating with the whole doing the video thing and just the real core basics? of what they should do to get started? Um, I would say um, always give it a try. You know, get uh, a lot of, when I first started, I, uh, it, it's the fear of facing a camera, looking at a camera. And, and it's, it's like you're, you're talking to someone, but then there's no one there. And, <laughs> and, and you get nervous and you get, I, I think um, uh, you would st- start. You have to start doing a little bit mini test videos and 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 work around it. And, and the fear. I think the fear is the most important thing. Most martial artists, uh, ma- most martial art uh, business owner knows their own stuff. If you don't know, then I would uh, be worried about it. <laughs> okay. okay. So most people know their own stuff, but to present it in front of a camera. So you know, my advice is, you know, you don't have to do it in front of your students or you know, just set up a tripod. Put a camera or put put your iPhone on, facing face yourself, and try to do some simple, you know, what, try try give it a shot, a one minute video, and have a look at it. If it's not too bad, you can always work on it. You know, this is this is a very different uh, uh, day to, to before. We can always shoot and reshoot. Uh, if it's not good, just delete, redo it again. If the audio is not good, I'm gonna sit and you know work on the mic and lighting. Lighting you do you can do it outdoor. Or just grab two lights that's facing from uh, behind the camera, like you were saying earlier, and facing towards you, and that would work. Okay, you don't want to have it. Um, I'm not expert, okay, but you don't want to have it above you. Above you, uh, there's shadows coming down. Okay, and it won't make you look too good. But if it's facing in front of you, have the audio on. Uh, try to get a tripod. It's tripod's a good idea. You know, don't want to shake your video unless you're uh, you're trying to do some action video. Uh, but I'll, I'll leave that to the video photographer. <laughs> okay. So those are my advices. Uh, it's not a not, not too much about the technology itself. You know, the mic itself is under a hundred dollars tripod. A cheap one is thirty. You know, it's about the fear of talking to a square shaped object 
and continue talking and showing your technique or d uh, displaying your school. You know, that's the hard bit, I think. Yes. You're so right. I think it's also the fear of um, uh, being judged. Um, yes. Is it, is it going to be good enough? What are my peers going to say? Are they going to... How, how are people going to perceive this? Um, am I going to get backlash of people... I mean, people love to hate on martial arts videos. Um, everybody always knows something better or you could have done this. I mean, that's just in the, in the bigger scheme of things. But I think there's that fear element of obviously um, getting over how am I going to be perceived by the community as such. Yes. Yes, it's also the fear. But, but remember, remember one thing. It's just like everything else and including martial arts. The more you train, the better you get. Right. You remember the first day when you walk into a dojo, you know nothing. OK. And then you get better at things. And then by, you know, you down the track when you like, for example, you get your black belt, you realize you only know little, you know, but that's that's how it is. OK. So so uh, with same with video. It's the fear. I don't know how to set this up. But, you know, try to learn. There's a lots of uh, videos online. You can learn, educate yourself educating yourself, but not going in and not not willing to educate yourself. That's the that is the big problem with a lot of uh, martial artists and not and general business people. And, you know, uh, that's a big problem. Right? So um, uh, my, my tip is just give it a go. Video yourself. Uh, lighting. If, you, if you're already videoing yourself, now see how you can improve it. Can you work better on the lighting? What about audio? You know, if, if you've got those video and audio, what about your uh, transitions between uh, uh, can, are you good at uh, are you good at editing? If not, you can always find people who are, are good at editing online, uh, like the, uh, places like Fiverr.com. You know, it's very uh, you can get someone to do your intro logos and things like that. And also um, another another important thing is I think you it, it's also uh, not just one video. You've got to think plan ahead. What is your goal? Is it a series of video? Is this uh, are these videos trying to help you promote your your school? What are you trying to showcase? Are you just trying to showcase a self-defense move where there's 10,000 people showing it already on, on YouTube? What make your video better than the video next door, you know, than the person next door? So that's what I think, you know. Definitely so. And, and I think that that's probably the most important part is what is the point? Um, like, <clears throat> why, why are you actually doing the video? Is it to speak to the prospects? Is it to speak to somebody in the community? Is it to speak to a existing student? And I mean, I know there are people that go as far as write that specific, just like, um, you know, in, 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 in marketing, when we write sales copy, we try and create this uh, avatar, this person. Um, his name's Bob, 35 year old, has two kids and wanting to start training martial arts, but he's not sure he's got these injuries. Um, he's never done anything. He thinks he needs to be fit. So you have this mental image of this one person and then base it on that. And I've heard a lot of people actually um, put a photo of someone behind the camera as well, just to take away that awkwardness, um, you know, of their perfect prospect, whoever they're trying to talk to. And, and now it, it becomes more real because you, you're having a conversation with someone. Yes. <laughs> Yes. I, I, when I first started doing the videos and, and the, a lot of interviews, I actually need someone to sit behind the camera so I can actually look at that person and explain to that person. And, uh, and that, that helps a lot too. You know, that helps a lot. And, and uh, I was saying earlier that uh, there's online um, uh, website that can help you uh, edit your videos. Uh, I forgot to say that there are a lot of apps these days, which you can actually put your videos in together, you know, a few clicks and and like iMovies on on your iPhone and, and different different types of apps, Adobe apps, and they can put your um you know if you're if you're looking at putting a marketing video for your school, that will help, definitely help you know. For but sure. obviously, getting a video photographer is the best. You know, it's the best. But but sometimes I put in um, I put in a bigger production and sometimes I do little bit production in between. What I try to do, I tend to do is um I try to put out uh, a video every week. So there's always a video. It can be a big production. It can be smaller. It can be uh, uh, talking about techniques, how I deal with things, and um, or or it can just be fun. I like to uh, you know um, when you were saying earlier, 
I know this is a little bit different to uh, how business-minded people where they write out programs and what they do. I like to be, I like fun. I, I enjoy, I enjoy with being with my students. I enjoy video and things. I, I do things. Uh, sometimes I don't. Um, I, it's not always about money for me, but I, no, it's no, there's no intention. So sometimes I blow my video budget. I just get, oh cool. Let's add the, add in the drone. How much is the drone? Five hundred. Oh, add in the drone. Don't tell my wife. You know, and it looks, it makes the video video looks cool. And, and uh, we, we went and sh we uh, a bunch of our students, we went to Glass Hill Mountain. We shot it at 5 a.m. in the morning with the drone going up. And, and it looks beautiful. I love I love this. And at the same time, it, it does it help? I think it helps. It helps uh, my potential, uh, maybe other people who are interested in training. Hey, this uh, teacher or this instructor seems fun. You know, uh, this school seems fun. And maybe it's not a direct, uh, marketing or direct uh, business uh, mindset. You know, I'm not trying to build this fun because I am fun. We are fun. You know, and this is what we're trying to showcase. You know, rather than come join with us, we are the bus. You know, fun school. You know, where the where we'll give you. No, it's not like that. You know, it's yeah. what we do make us who we are. <laughs> that's that's excellent. So, and you're really using it as a way to express your your personality. And I'd, I'd probably add to that then because I think that's the when, when you're starting out, that's probably the biggest obstacle. Well, once you've actually started doing it, the, the biggest thing is to really just find your voice, that, that place where you're comfortable, in, you're comfortable with the camera and the way you portray yourself. For me, it was um, the, the rule I put in place with, with face-to-camera video is just be comfortable messing up. Uh, just be comfortable making mistakes. You know, if we're having a conversation, I mean, I do it in the podcast all the time. I fumble yes. on a word or I, I say something and I'm like, oh, okay, I shouldn't have said that. But yes. I just laugh it off. I just make peace with it because if I was having a conversation with someone, that's that's my personality. That's the way I am. So I'm going to make these mistakes. Mm. Now it's just on video and, hey, there's, there's nothing really different. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yes, sir. But, but there's one thing... Um... Um, I, I, I forgot to say is when you put it out there, when you put yourself out there, there will be people like everything else in the world. You know, there will be people that like you, and there will be a lot of people that don't like you. You know, and and to present yourself out there, you know, there will be to people leaving not so friendly comment, and you just have to ignore them. You know, and this is what you do, and and why. So so that might be uh, something uh, a business, a martial art business owner will have to think before they present themselves, you know, post themselves out there, you know. Yes, uh, my and and my filter for that is when I get backlash, then I'm obviously doing something right. Um, that's <laughs> that's that's the justification I have for myself. But it, it's really true because once you, when you start speaking to a certain audience and the right audience that connects with you then this polarizing thing almost happens automatically um, mm. because you're connecting with a certain profile which means you are upsetting other profiles or they just don't agree or they have never done a video and they're jealous and they're not getting over their own fear so the defense mechanism is to run you down because they're just not doing it so yeah mm. But but definitely get comfortable with the the backlash that that comes with any form of content marketing and such. That's right. Yes. So so I guess to to wrap up, we can put together a bit of a framework. You know, um, I really like production style video for the the big things you're going to do. I, I see you were you had an, an awesome promo video on your YouTube channel for the events um, yep. with music, and it was really. Just it, it had the suspense feel to it, which was which was really good with the opening and just the music in the background. Um, but then again, I'm a big fan of of also just videos on the fly because if you're doing video as a, a method for content marketing, um, then it's good to not have barriers to that you get it done. Um, mm. And and that would be just maybe it's the the iPhone and the mic and the boom. And you've got light coming into your dojo on the mats, and now you can do something. Or hand it to the camera to a student to do the filming. So mm -hmm. I guess if we had to look at a checklist, we've talked about um, finding your voice. Yes. Um, having having the lights pointed at you. Yes. Um, try and get a good mic. 
mm-hmm. try and get a good mic. I guess if you don't have a mic, just just start because it could take you 10, 10 takes of a video to actually feel that comfort of, okay, this is something that I actually want to want to put up. Um, so we got that. Make sure that we cover the topic. Be very clear on the opening because we want to grab attention. And then, then start your content, what it is that you're going to do. And I guess I'll add for a little framework, um, something that we've, and, and, and public speakers have always spoken about this, that the, you, uh, you tell them what you're going to tell them, then you tell them, and then you tell them what you just told them. And, uh, and it, it, it does, it, it does really add to the, to the, to the video framework because now you can just say, Hey, this is me. This is what we're going to do. Mm. This is maybe the situation, how it will happen. And then you do it. And then you do the recap. And then you can close off, obviously, with, you know, check us out on YouTube or, um, your website, wherever you want to, want to go. Was You're that- good at this. Exactly <laughs> what you just did. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what you just said you went through all the point list what we just said you know <laughs> <laughs> there we go awesome um before we wrap up just with your where people could find you because you gotta and, and we're gonna we'll add a lot of videos to this app to to this episode um so you can just check the show notes for that um is there anything that i should have asked you that i did not get to um, we didn't, we didn't get to talk about, um, uh, the positive energy, which is, which, which is, um, um, another reason I, I said, we are happy. We're a good club, you know, we're a fun club, but I also, also believe we're a positive energy and that's the culture of the club. So, um, we, I did say earlier about, um, um, people marketing their videos towards different, um, uh, different uh, point of view and why they do their videos, but also showcase your school. It's it's you know so people know who you are, what you do before they come in and see you, and that's very important too. Yeah, good, very good point. And and I guess with that, it it would help that your videos don't have to be, you don't have to be the the euro. This is actually I I remember this now. I I added this as a slide in one of our training modules in the academy. But the whole thing was don't be you don't have to be the euro. Um, yeah. If you want to showcase, as you say, um, mm. why not get your students involved? That's right. That's right. I'm, I'm not in, not always the center of the spotlight, and a lot of my videos are my students and why they enjoy training here and what uh, and, and the events. We we had events where they uh, we dress up in um, um, Star Wars costume and we order lightsabers in and we had uh, some dueling and then we did some you know some training workshop and all the donation money goes to. Um, Children's Hospital, you know, you know, things like that. You know, it, it showcases what you are and what you do and what you enjoy and what you believe. That's most important. That's what I think. That's excellent, and and we can tie that back to marketing as well because you know, if, at the time of recording this, it's Halloween's coming up. Yeah, you know, that's that's an ideal. You know, how can you turn that into a fun event that um, doesn't have to be marketing marketing video, but yes. you showcase the fun environment and the positive positive energy. That, that happens at your school. Yes. All right, awesome. Well, Jack Lung, it's been fantastic speaking to you. Now, for anybody that wants to check out Jack's website, we've got, it's practical-wingchun.com.au. Did I get that right? That's right, yes. And and your YouTube channel, if people want to find that. what What is your YouTube channel called? Search on Practical Wing Chun Australia, and then you can find me on, on the YouTube channel. All right, awesome. Any any other links that we need to mention where people can find? Uh, Practical Wing Chun Australia on the Facebook link, and you can find me here. Yeah. Thank you. All right, awesome. Jack, Bean, it's been great speaking to you. I will speak to you soon. Thank you. I'll see you soon. Take awesome. care, buddy. Cheers.